Once you created an entrance, like as you did with Trojans, yeah. or with Symptoms, or with your first album, like where do you go from there in making your second album? Like, is it reactionary so to all, like to the success, or do you try all, to pretend like it's just all downhill, really? For me, yeah. you just um, you just ride that ride that wave and just and crash it down. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, I mean, is it reactionary? That's a question because I try to not react too much to I mean yes it's a good barometer of like okay you're doing something right if people react to the song like they did with that one mm. uh, but for me it was more I wanted to uh, interesting to see what Mike says for me it was like I wanted to make sure that it was more not trying to recreate that song 20 times it was like recreating that honesty that went into that song which mm. I think was why it was successful yeah because I mean, people react to honesty and, and people, people can smell um, fear and, um, and, you know, like when people are trying to chase trends mm. and it's kind of repulsive generally in art whenever anyone tries to do that. So that's what I think you try to really put them. Yeah, you try to react to the fact, okay, yep, that word, there was something in that there that, and, 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 and the, it's, more, it's more of a vindication that, right. you know, your, your journey uh, to get there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to make an album and pretend as if you didn't know you guys were just coming off of like being successful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. You know that. But you, you just do your best to try and still. put yourself back in that that mindset of just, okay, it's, it's all about the music. It's not about like what people are going to think of it or, right. or trying to chase any crowds or anything. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Oh, so yeah, like the process of actually making the music. Like I've spoken to people who make music before and they usually write it first and then treat it with the melody and with the music? Like, which comes first? Like, what your, like, the lyrics and, like, the words or, like, the music of itself? Normally the music for us. And then you write, like, for that song specifically? Yeah. Okay. Typically that's the way that we work. Sometimes I have some lyrics that I will, um, you know, I guess it's effectively poetry. Mm. And then to put it into a song. Or, but normally it'll start with the music and that will inspire the, the theme of the song. Okay, and then what is the writing process for you guys? Like, is it like in little bits and pieces until you have a full cohesive yeah, song, a lot, or is a lot, it like a, a lot of the time it is like that? You know, like you said, homes and bits of music, and you piece it together. Um, and other times, it, you know, sometimes it's just a very linear thing, and you write a song like in a day. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, it's it'll be some some drum beat or some guitar riff or synth sound or something that we've got that's been sitting there for maybe six months and, right. and quite often I think that it's a lot easier to appreciate what you have in an idea when, you've, when some time has passed so you can go back and think that you know I thought there was something in that and now in retrospect I, I still agree with myself that yes there's an idea that we're pursuing and and that's then you do and other times you you, know, you might have something that you're like on the day you know, this is the best thing ever and then you go back you know, like this is crap and so you don't you don't work on that so it's kind of like giving yourself the time for things to sort of marinate and, then and go back to. What are, like, I guess the, the most common themes that, like, inspire you guys to write? Like, the things that you end up writing about generally? Um, well... Like, that you're drawn to? Yeah, I think that... That will make you write a song. It's funny, like, I... It, it, it's very easy to write about relationships. Yeah. You know, and... Well, it's easy and it's not, because the honesty can be very challenging. But... And I, I find quite often I'm drawn to songs that aren't necessarily about that. Um, but then, I don't know, like, I'm, on this new album, I'd say, like, certain songs, yeah, like, it's probably 50, 50, half the songs are about, like, a personal relationship. And it doesn't have to be necessarily romantic, though. It could yeah. be, like, a, you know, just a platonic relationship that's kind of, someone really pissed you off or whatever. Like, you know, I guess a lot of the times it's like that. Um, I think that's, I'm drawn to... Um, and also things that aren't too grandiose. I don't like like many songs where someone's trying to sell you on like you know how important it is to drive a Prius or something like <laughs> you know like, it's more about like I guess uh, those micro um, moments that between human beings. Is there like the most personal song like off Inanimate Objects that you would say is the most personal to you, like lyrics wise? Um, Levitate is probably the most personal song I think. I like Levitate and uh, Friends with Enemies. Okay. The two most personal songs on, on, on that album. Oh, that's a good one. 
And um, of the sets, like you've done over time, like when you're playing, especially like at a festival, are there any songs that are like the most rewarding, like each time to play? Because I imagine like playing show after show, it kind of might get like static after a while. Like, is there anything that like just each time you play it, like the crowd loves it, you love it, like it's just the most rewarding to perform? Uh, I enjoy playing Stockholm. Yeah. Because it's a, uh, it's a rocker, you know. It just um, it has a roll and rhythm to it. There's something about playing that on an outdoor festival. It just kind mm. of does its own thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, Trojans is always fun. They're all taking turns at the moment still. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it doesn't really get boring because the crowd's different. Every you, you yeah. know, if you applied to the same group of people, you would feel their boredom. <laughs> but it's not. Generally, you, know, you play you know a different city every every night, and um, but also you try and you have little moments within songs that you can mess around with, and each night you can interpret slightly differently. Yeah, so it's a bit different each night. Yeah, to, to keep yourself sane. <laughs> I would imagine. Um, and so both of you guys are vegans. Yes. And you both seem to be very passionate about yes. that topic. Yeah. When did you guys start being vegan? And I guess what. Like, are you active in being, like, a, a vegan activist? You know, do you do um, things in the vegan community? Or I guess just I was curious, is yeah. your relationship with, with veganism? Um, well, it all started probably five, four, five years ago. Probably five years ago. Um, we were kind of vegetarian um, as, as, as kids. Mm. Um, and then we became teenagers, and then, like, a lot of teenagers, it's all, you're very selfish, and it's all about you, and it's cheeseburgers and all sorts yeah. of crap. And then as you kind of get a little bit older, you start to um, think, okay, well, this, where is this coming from? I think I always thought about that even when I was eating meat. Like, where is this coming from? I, I remember actually, I had this thought, I used to work at KFC when I was a teenager, which is kind of basically the opposite of being a vegan is yeah, at KFC. Fair. And I remember having this thought, like, we were serving up all this chicken, yeah. and, like, it's endless, like, drumsticks. And, like, for every two Every drumsticks two we sell out, that's like a chicken's legs, like, and then every mm. chicken breast, that's one chicken. And I remember, like, and I wasn't, it didn't push me at that point to go vegan, because I wasn't even really aware of that you could go vegan. Aware of it. And I remember thinking, this is horrific, like, what's, how many chickens are going into this? And I think, that, so it was always there at the back of my mind, and then you, there was, like, the important thing that's happening now is there are documentaries that you can watch and go, okay, I can't ignore this anymore, this is horrific, it's cultural, that it's this cultural thing that we do, just because we've been doing it for hundreds of years doesn't mean it's right. Because you know, humans have been, human beings have done so many fucked up things for so many years. Like you know, there's been churches that they hid pedophilia. There's been, um, you know, uh, uh, like you know, slavery. There's been, um, you know, women have been mistreated. And in the same way, for me, like speciesism and sexism and racism, they're all the same thing. It's like treating people poorly or, or animals poorly or, or whoever on very arbitrary bullshit reasons yeah. and like animals like you look at uh, there's so many people who say like oh I love animals I love animals and then they'll go and eat a fucking steak it's like you know you love your dog but you're not an animal lover like it's like you don't love kids if you go out and kill them like it's, it's yeah. bullshit um, so I think it just it became this thing where I just couldn't Michael was the same like, yeah. and actually all, our whole family's vegan you just couldn't really? couldn't ignore it anymore. Yeah, is it ever like hard, like when you first started like fully going vegan? Because the people I've spoken who are vegan, they have moments where f or dietary think. reasons like it gets a bit difficult. No, I think that um, if people say like I've I've had I've got friends, well people I know, mm -hmm. who come up with this, and I get so pissed off when you get <laughs> someone who was a vegan. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look, I just my doctor told me my iron levels were really, really? low. It's like fucking take a tablet. Like, <laughs> does that mean like? It's like it's more beans or some shit. Yeah, like yeah. just seriously, like or or you know, like or maybe your doctor doesn't fucking understand what being healthy is because there's right. so many doctors that just prescribe Zoloft and fucking you know cancer tre like there are these bullshit treatments that don't really um, help. Right. Um, so yeah, I, in my opinion, like uh, that's what really bugs me. Okay. Uh, what was your question again? <laughs> no, you answered it. Because <laughs> some people do say stuff like that that implies that it's almost it's impossible not hard to live out. Protein, uh, it's like, your protein, okay, yeah, like sometimes we, sometimes right. you get to a truck stop and you're in the Midwest and yes, you're not going to get a gourmet <laughs> vegan meal. But you can make things work anywhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you go to any shitty fast food restaurant and make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Taco Bell is a hack. We go to Taco Bell and we, we get a seven layer burrito and we take off the cheese and we take off the yeah, sour cream I got and it's vegan. Like, how easy is that? Taco Bell is everywhere. Mm. So it's not hard. 
Okay. Um, and then it's been mentioned before that the name of you guys came to you in a dream. What was the dream? So what I do, normally when people ask that question, I bullshit. Do you just the dream make up bullshit. something? So I so made up the story dream. that he... Um, oh, shit. <laughs> no, because I remember reading about the Beatles years ago and, that, um, and, and John Lennon had a bullshit story that he had the name came to him mm -hmm. in a dream. It was a man on a flaming pie. And I thought, well, was, I'm going to say that Michael had a dream. I mean, it was the thing. No, it didn't. So no dream. No, there was no dream. I haven't dreamed dreamt for a long time. Wait, is, is it, is that, you don't dream? Not at the moment. I used to. I used to have nightmares if, you, if the window was closed and it wasn't fresh air. I have dreams. Mm. Like I'm going to miss my flight. Like this it's probably just not a dream. It's wide awake. Oh, that's not right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys thank you. so much for being able to speak. <laughs>